Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about hyponatremia. In this video, I will be discussing the role of sodium in the body, an overview of hyponatremia, the different causes of hyponatremia, as well as the clinical manifestations and nursing interventions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below for any questions, and if you want to see more content, please consider subscribing to my channel. So before we discuss hyponatremia, it's important to know the different roles that sodium plays in the body. Sodium is an electrolyte found in the ECF or extracellular fluid, and the normal level is 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. In the body, sodium regulates ECF volume by influencing water through osmosis, regulates nerve conduction through action potentials, as well as regulating muscle contractions and acid-base balance. So when you break down the word hyponatremia, hypo means low, NATR means sodium, and emia means in the blood, thus meaning low sodium in the blood. So this is just a general diagram that depicts a comparison between sodium at normal levels and hyponatremia. In the diagram, the left-hand side illustrates the extracellular space, whereas the right-hand side illustrates the intracellular space. In addition, the top half of the diagram illustrates the conditions when sodium are within normal limits, whereas the bottom half illustrates hyponatremia. As you can see, the top half has equally distributed sodium in both the extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. However, in hyponatremia, there will relatively be more sodium inside of the cell, which will cause water to shift into the cell by way of osmosis, causing cellular swelling. When it comes to the causes of hyponatremia, it's usually either a loss of sodium, gain of water, or a mixture of both. Any form of excessive sodium loss can lead to hyponatremia such as profuse sweating, GI suctioning, vomiting, diarrhea, burns, and wound drainage, as such fluids are rich in sodium. Excessive water intake without proper electrolyte replacement can also lead to hyponatremia since the water to sodium ratio in the blood will be off balance as there will be more water in relation to the overall amount of sodium in the body. A lack of sodium in the diet can lead to hyponatremia such as in individuals who are doing some sort of fasting diet. SIADH or syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone is a disease that leads to hyponatremia. In SIADH, there is an abnormal increase in production of ADH from the pituitary gland in the brain, thus causing an increased reabsorption of water in the kidneys, ultimately leading to low levels of sodium due to the increased amounts of water that's reabsorbed. Hypoaldosteronism and Addison's disease lead to hyponatremia. Aldosterone is a hormone release from the adrenal glands that help in reabsorbing sodium from the kidney. With a lack of this hormone, such as in hypoaldosteronism in Addison's disease, this leads to a decreased reabsorption of sodium, thus leading to low sodium levels in the body. Lastly, heart failure is another condition that leads to hyponatremia due to the fact that heart failure's characteristic fluid overload can lead to dilution of sodium in the bloodstream, thus leading to hyponatremia. So when it comes to thinking about the clinical manifestations associated with hyponatremia, it's always important to remember sodium's roles in the body. In the previous sections, we discussed how sodium regulates action potentials between nerves and muscle contractions. So when there is an imbalance in sodium, you would tend to see abnormalities related to neurological, such as confusion, irritability, seizures, coma, and in the neuromuscular, like weakness, tremors, muscle spasms, abdominal cramping, and shallow respirations. It's important to note, however, that coma and shallow respirations typically manifest as late signs in hyponatremia. So when it comes to nursing interventions, you would first determine, then treat the underlying cause. If hyponatremia is rooted from an excess of fluid in the body, place patients on a fluid restriction. Also encourage patients to consume a diet rich in sodium. Sodium tablets may also be given at this time. Some examples of sodium rich foods are potato chips, lunch meat, and canned food. IV hypertonic normal saline may also be administered to correct both the fluid loss and low sodium, but remember to give these fluids slowly to avoid fluid overload. Also monitor sodium levels closely. For conditions such as SIADH, medications such as conivaptan or tolvaptan may be administered to block ADH activity. 
thus allowing for excretion of excess fluid. And that is it for the video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And again, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content.